policy studies from Iowa State. She has a master's in head leadership and a master's in special ed. She has a bachelor's in elementary ed. Carolyn has served as a superintendent, a SPED director, high school assistant principal, middle school principal, elementary principal, and a SPED teacher for 18 years. Dr. Menard introduced me to that fast-paced lifestyle of a director at a large school district. This has been a great learning opportunity for me as I often been in smaller 3A schools. Uh, I've never seen a large school district in action. I don't think we sat down all but one time for lunch in our 11 hour day. We were constantly on the go, visiting from building to building all the various special education classrooms. I believe we visited around eight different buildings that day and she provided meaningful feedback to all of our staff members. She is responsible for all special education teachers in the district. She oversees more students in special ed at Ankeny than Boone has altogether K through 12. I think it's around 2,000 some students. I believe one of the most beneficial experiences of the day is she allowed me to sit in on a mediation between two teachers at one of the high schools. It was awesome to see her be so professional and calm and handling a highly emotional meeting. She dictated how the meeting would go in an appropriate manner and resolve the situation before it continued to escalate. Moving forward, standard two isn't my strongest, but I try to get experiences that will help me become more confident in my abilities to master standard two. Okay, standard three is management. Uh, I had a lot of great experiences during the past few years that revolved around management that it was difficult to choose two. However, I believe the best opportunity that I was able to take advantage of during all my internships was being able to sit in as an interim principal for three days in a row at high school, which is not my building. Uh, I work in the middle school, so I'm coming over to a new school uh, that I'm not as familiar with the staff, which I think uh, was a good opportunity. The current principal at the high school is at an RTI training, and our district currently didn't have any assistant principals or deans. So what an amazing opportunity for me to be able to completely try to lead a building and staff for three days. I sketched a rough outline on how I wanted my days uh, to go. I wanted to be visible as I could and get into classrooms. All teachers were really receptive to this. I was kind of nervous about that. I also wanted to have a... Uh, excuse me. Uh, I wanted to be visible as getting classrooms. They all receptive to this. I wanted to have a great communication with staff if issues did arise, and which lucky for me, they did happen. <laughs> I had a staff member report that they found two students with drugs in the bathroom. After interviewing both students, they did admit to having drugs. I confiscated the contraband and continued to conduct a search through the students' belongings, which was justified by reasonable suspicion. I did not find anything else and I took another staff member with me during the searches to cover myself. The situation intensified as one of the students in trouble was a staff member's child. I will say it like uh, excuse me again. The situation intensified. I will say it was difficult to break the news to a colleague about the child, as this is the first time something like this happened for the student. I talked with the parents first in private, then I allowed the students to talk one on one with their parents. Then I talked with the parents again. At the end of the situation, I had full documentation, and our search and seizure uh, outline was completed which I found in our board policy. During my last day at the high school, I received this note card from an instructional coach, uh, which is on here in the top right corner of my PowerPoint. The letter states, Dear Drake, as an instructional coach, I am out and about, sometimes hourly, checking up with teachers. Usually conversations are student and classroom focused. However, because you have been our principal the past three days, I am learning and hearing a lot of compliments about your administrative work. Keep doing what you're doing. Your actions have already had a positive impact on our staff. They are confident of your future success as a principal. This letter just reminded me that what I'm doing and what I'm passionate about is my true calling and I have the potential to be successful in the future as an educational leader. Okay, the second reflection I'll talk about the for management is how I was able to Participate with our building principal and our data specialist to create a totally revamped master schedule 
uh, for the 18-19 school year. The schedule most uh, must include our team time and still have time to meet with our PLC partners. Um, so PLC uh, is going to be content based and then our team time is grade level based. Uh, in addition to that we must fit a 30 minute skinny period for our universal intervention system that all staff and students will participate in at the same time. One of the, uh, the first things we did was gather input from all parties team leaders, SPED teachers, and specialties. This way everyone feels like they have a voice in the decision. I quickly realized three things when building a master schedule. One, it is very time consuming. <laughs> Two, uh, music is a driving force uh, when building a new schedule. And three, no matter what, someone will not be satisfied with the new schedule. It is nearly impossible to accommodate for every single staff member's wants. When reviewing the input from staff members uh, from our Google survey, some of the needs were more actually wants. For example, when our lunch should be, what period of the day they wanted their plan time. Uh, as we try to make everyone happy, it just doesn't work that way. Tom Crean once said, if it doesn't help you make everyone, or excuse me, if it doesn't help you improve, don't consume your thoughts with it. Getting better is hard enough. Don't waste your time or energy on distractions. I feel this is kind of the approach we took when creating the master schedule. Don't get caught up on distractions or unnecessary desires. Lastly, aside from the master schedule, I was solely responsible for creating a staff lunch duty schedule for the last two months of the school year. Our lunchroom got a bit out of hand and a little hectic uh, as we had support staff supervising lunch. So our principal felt it was necessary to add staff members into each lunch period. I got all staff involved to build equity in the process and it allows each person during the last or it allows each person to have less days to supervise. I believe that each staff member had to serve lunch duty twice during the last couple months of the school year and it worked really well. Finally, I believe that my strongest area as an educational leader is management. I feel I have deep understanding of the standard and my attributes support me to be successful in management. Dennis Wolf, who's an instructor of our management course at Viterbo, uh, said, without management, nothing else can happen in the school. Okay, standard four, family and community. Uh, one of the Boone's district goals is building strong relationship between the school and families. When I first arrived at Boone, student teacher conferences needed a bit of a revamp. Our team, our 8th grade team, piloted a new form of conferences for the whole district that were more individualized um, and met the needs of some of our most struggling students. We offered two days of conferences like normal. However, the first night was closed forum, where we personally contacted and scheduled a select list of students and families to come in. During these meetings, the district offered dinner, pizza, to say thank you for taking the time to meet, 10 out of our 11 scheduled meetings attended in the fall, and we eventually got the last one scheduled to come in at a more convenient time for them. The downside of this style was we only left one night of open conferences for the rest of the families. Our turnout rate was only 33% for the fall. So I started to reflect and brainstorm what would make parents commit to coming into conferences. I started talking to our counselor at the middle school about the possibility to allow our 8th grade students to register for high school at spring conferences. She agreed and liked the idea. We got it approved by our principal and started planning. I took three days out of my class time to go over four year plans, next year schedules, and I also brought in the high school counselor to come speak, uh, come speak to our students. In addition, I set up the first ever middle school careers event uh, high school students came down and presented to our middle schoolers about various careers that they are interested in or pursuing in college. It's a great cross-curricular experience and our middle schoolers really look up to those, those high schoolers. So after lots of planning and organizing, we officially promoted the opportunity to families and students about registering for high school. We offered three different sessions parents can sign up for and had a very successful turnout. 95% turnout rate. Uh, the picture above is just one of the three sessions. Uh, we received a lot of positive feedback from the parents. Uh, Boone, I hope they can continue to do this next year as I won't be there. But that's just that's our library in the top right. 
and that's just one of our sessions. So I was really excited. Uh, we got some high school students to come down and just talk about some different classes that are available at high school uh, and what they're really interested in, extracurricular wise and uh, club wise. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, another way to build positive relationships with families is through various modes of communication. So we have the Toy Over Times newsletter, newsletter, we have social media, uh, weekly emails home, and but I think the most genuine is a phone call, especially when it's dealing with a discipline issue. Uh, I think it is very important to develop relationships and show empathy if at all possible. Uh, I need them, we need families on our side as they support will go a long way in making our life easier and their kids' life at school better. Uh, if I show empathy, I can't imagine like what you're going through when I'm talking to parents. Those will help soften the conversation and the parent might let their guard down and see you as a person, not just someone calling to get their kid in trouble. As an effective communicator, can get their message across without poking the, or without poking the parent in the eye, if that makes sense to you guys. Uh, the kid already messed up, the parent is already upset and embarrassed, no need to lecture them. It sounds political, and I guess in a way it is. I mean, as an administrator, I have one shot at a first impression with parents when I call for the first time. Uh, something, I observed the assistant principal at Bonnery at once, and he passed on this helpful information. He said, if you have a big disciplined phone call, make sure you have your ducks in a row, and write out what you want to say and how you want to say it. Don't be afraid to practice what you want to say with another administrator if you have the chance. It's better to practice and or discuss what you want to say and be ready 